Hey, no that problem. Was awesome. We are oh, here. Thank you. We Welcome are here. Everybody. We got Mike McCalco. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? And we have Nate Savage. What's going on? Yes. Yeah. Nate is uh, the king of guitarlessons.com, and uh, he's actually helping us out with Dromeo. He does a lot of the play-alongs. You actually wrote that play-along we did for this. Actually, I stole that one from my best friend who lives in Amarillo, ah. uh, Amarillo, Texas. Sam and Angie Wakefield for the band Practical Shoes. Yeah. But I did cool. record it and arrange it. That's the only one that you'll be getting that I didn't write. So <laughs> There you go. Well, thanks very much, everybody, for coming out. Um, yeah. We're going to be talking about, well, one of the lessons. This is the first, one of the first fan-requested lessons from Drumio. They always wanted to see a lesson on djembe and cajon, yeah. or as I like to call, the Cajun. Um, <laughs> Mike's playing the and, Cajun and, and the Jambi and, and the Jambi and today. The um, you got some other percussion stuff on there, too, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have a blast today. It's going to be great. Yeah, and for everybody here who's watching, every Monday we give away stuff. We're going to give away three monthly memberships to Drumio again. Um, so what we're going to do for that, go to facebook.com slash Drumio. We always ask a question related to um, uh, whether it's the lesson that we're currently doing or something like that. But this time, I want to know what kind of lesson would you like to see Drumio do? Uh, this was a fan requested or a member requested the lesson. A lot of people in the Drumio members asked, can we have a djembe or a cajon lesson? Mike's the guy to do it. And, we did both. Uh, why not do both or at the same both time? time? There you go. <laughs> so go to facebook.com slash Drumio and give us, uh, first off, like the page, and second off, write on our wall what kind of lesson, what is the most requested lesson that you could think of or one lesson that you'd want us to do. Uh, because like I said, this is a, a member-requested lesson. I hmm. think it's going to be great. So, cool. so do that halfway or towards the end of the lesson. I'm going to pick three random Facebook uh, um, posts, and you guys will win a free month of Drumio. Wow. Cool. Very cool. Very super cool. Okay, there's no smart beat technology for this because it's all improv, djembe, Cajun. <laughs> I'm going to let Mike take it away. Go for it, Mike. Anyways, how's everybody doing? How are you guys doing? Yeah, today we're going to talk about the African djembe and the Peruvian uh, cajon. And uh, it's funny because this, this drum here, I would have to say, and some people can, can agree with me, is probably one of the easier hand drums to learn mm -hmm. and play. And the main reason for that is because um, they're the easiest drum to generate a tone from. I also play uh, Cuban congas and bongos, and I, I study quite a bit of technique on that. And it's a little bit tougher to get the proper techniques. Um, not saying that you know it's a lot different than congas, because I apply a lot of conga and bongo technique to djembe. Uh, did have some some djembe lessons with some African um, African teachers, and did learn some stuff. But the main thing is, if you guys are wanting to start on any hand percussion, uh, djembe is the way to go. Because what we'll demonstrate, Nate and I today will demonstrate, is how we can take this to the beach, to the park, to the campfire, you know, and jam. You don't need a full drum set for you drum set players and that say, well, I want to play some hand percussion. Definitely go with the djembe. So djembe pronounced djembe, not jambi or jambe, or I've heard all, I've heard everything. Um, is from Africa, and a uh, beautiful drum. They come in various sizes. I think uh, Cajun Spice can play one, a little smaller one a little bit later. Maybe we'll mix it up and switch. Sure, yeah. But different sizes. I kind of like, preferably, 12, 13, 14 inch. Main reason is you get the main bass tone. Yes. Uh, am I gonna need to hit the switch when I hit the? No, you're the you're good to go. Today. Um, so the, the main reason when I'm looking for a djembe, I like to buy one. We'll just talk about this really quick. Is the first thing I do is I hit a bass tone right in the center. Want that real big deep sound. That's what I'm looking for. If it sounds like this, I probably won't buy it. Now, the reason that that drum sounds like that is it's actually on the it's actually on the floor. It's flat. So right now it's a table or an iPod holder or whatever. <laughs> the thing about a djembe, there's no holes in the drum except for in the very bottom, and the air needs to escape. So as soon as I tip this drum, you hear that? Yeah. So we start. It doesn't sound as good here. It's not got a microphone on it, but. That's what you want to do. You, want, you don't want to go up to a djembe in the store and just hit it like that because it's just an expensive coffee table is all it is. So what you want, you want to tip it over, you know, or lift it up, right? You can lift the thing right up like this and listen for that bass tone. Yeah. Um, this one here, this, is this yours? This, this drum here? That one's Jared. This is Jared. Right? Yeah. So it's an inch bigger and I just found it had a little bit more bass tone to it. So mm -hmm. I prefer to use this one today as opposed to my personal one. Um, you don't spend a lot of money, guys, on djembe's. You, you know, I, I'd say around 200 bucks. Two to 300 bucks will get you a great djembe. I'm not sure what Jared paid for this. I couldn't imagine more than 300 bucks. I think you I, paid 250 for this I paid 250 for this guy yeah. probably about 10 years ago, you know. And um, also the other thing too is look for weight. I don't want it to weigh as much as me. Okay, so make sure you can carry it around. I mean, this looks really heavy. It's all, you know, hollowed out uh, hand-carved wood. And I prefer those, I mean, because it's, it's very ethnic and very organic uh, looking and sounding. Um, there are some out there on the market that uh, are made by, by Remo and Toka and all those. And those are amazing, too. Those will last a really long time. So it's a really, it's a 
personal preference, guys. There's no real better for me. I just like the look of the wood ones. It just feels like I'm in Africa or something like that, you know, playing in the, playing in the jungle. Anyway, so I'm going to quickly talk about the tones, of how to get, how to get uh, the tones from the drums, and you guys can uh, practice some of this for some of you djembe players. And keep in mind, if you have a really small drum, you may not be able to get the bass tones as nice on these, uh, on these bigger drums. So the first one is the bass tone. And the thing about hand percussion, first thing is no rings. I take rings off. Yeah. Okay? I just took my wedding ring off. Uh, main reason, I don't want to damage the drum head, and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to damage uh, the ring. Uh, or injure my finger. Okay, so that's the first thing that I want to make sure is that no rings and any kind of other jewelry you have. And the, what I'm going to do is a very relaxed, my hand being very, very relaxed, right in the center of the drum. Okay, not this isn't relaxed, right? That's not super relaxed. I want to be very, very just, just like I'm resting my hand on something. Bring my hand down, hit the drum, but release it off the drum immediately. Because if I leave it on there, it sounds like Kills coffee it. table again, right? So let the let the drum head resonate. Just like a guitar string. You know, if you let the string ring, you really hear it. You're letting the whole drum and the head resonate. Okay? And practice that with both hands. Okay? And that's that's your bass tone. I see some people really arching their hand and they're kind of getting this. It's a little bit more attack. It's not bad, but if you want that looser, sort of beefier sound, you know, relax your hand as much as you can. If you want that harsher sound, you can arch your hand a bit and get a little bit more attack from the the rounder part of your hand when you arch it up like that. But so either way, super, super relaxed. Okay. Uh, the next tone, what I do here is I'll, I'll go to the center of the drum. If we have the uh, overhead, do we have the overhead cam available? Um, is from the center of the drum, I, I join my hands like this to make a triangle in between my two hands. And I'm going to pull my hands back towards me until my thumbs fall off the edge like this. Okay. So at this point, what happens is the rim of the drum is in contact with this softer part of my the, the palm of my hand here. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's because, you know, that's hard, that edge right there, you know, especially on my drum. My drum's got a, more of an angle. This one's got a bit of a softer angle or a, sort of a rounder angle. Mine's a little more edged. This feels pretty comfortable, but I want to make sure that I'm hitting on the softest part of my hand because with hand percussion, guys, you've got to be careful. You can injure yourself if you're not careful. So from here, I'll bring my hands back. Okay. Now, if I take one hand away and just practice this, the first thing I'm going to do is bring my hand down and hit the drum and get it off there. open tone. Practice with both hands. But you have to get your hand off the drum. You don't have to go, you know, you can just leave it low. I'm kind of like letting my hands, the palms of my hands rest on the rope here. But I'm getting that open tone. So you got the bass tone, open tone. Yep. Perfect. Uh, what we do now is the same position, is I'm going to leave my hand, this time when I hit the drum, I'm going to keep my hand on the drum. This is a closed tone, uh, also known as a muffled tone. So I'm closing it up, you can see I'm choking it this time, mm -hmm. right? So same thing, you can have a closed bass tone, or a muffled bass tone, right? Closed tone, open tone. So the first thing you do is you practice all those tones, okay? And you can mess around with all kinds of ideas, but the main thing is to get the tone from the drum. You'll find a really well-tuned drum will give you those tones really, really nicely. Um, another tone you guys can try is a, is a conga technique, which is the slap, okay? And the slap is a little bit harder. It, the same concept applies from my fingers being uh, down here near the edge of the drum, is this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that there's like a, that fly that keeps flying around here, right? There's a fly that keeps flying around the studio. I'm trying to get it. I'm not gonna, I need chopsticks. Um, then I'll get it. Is uh, I'm going to pretend that fly landed right there. Okay. okay? Hello. Ah, uh, there you go. Got oh, him. I didn't get him, right? <laughs> so what this is this time is my hand's going to come down, but I'm actually coming down at a bit of an angle. My my fingers are kind of angled to the floor. If the floor is like this, my hand is angled a little bit more like that. And as I come down to strike the drum, I almost pull my fingers toward me just a tiny bit. We can see that real nice on that camera there, right? But this takes practice. Right? Look at that, huh? Yeah. Take your head off and kill that fly. <laughs> right? And that's a great conga technique. Now, if you want to muffle the drum with your opposite hand, you really get that closed yeah. slap. I mean, this is more of an open slap because the drum is kind of opening up, you know, and giving you that, that open tone. 
but you muffle it up. Now you get that real nice smack, right? And practice, practice both hands. This takes, this takes a bit of time, guys. What I used to practice is on my legs, I'd be doing this until it hurt. <laughs> you know? And if it hurts, you're doing it right. So if, you're, if it hurts and you're doing it right, take it to the drum. You will feel this. For some of you guys who haven't played uh, uh, hand drums before, you're definitely going to feel this. So never push it to the point where you're injuring yourself. You know, let your hands rest. Maybe come back to you. You got to build up a tolerance. That's I was going to say, like you yeah. build up calluses almost. You do have to build up a tolerance, and um, and that's the thing about hand drummers is you got to be careful. And I play hand drum. I, at one time, hand drums were like 80% of my gigs. Oh, now really? they're 20. It's funny, you know. But it was the main reason too is like you know guys would be like. Hey man, do you own a djembe or do you own a cajon? I know you play drums and you can do this on drums and all that, but do you own a cajon? Because we're just going to the coffee shop gig or to the you know the wedding and there's a lot of older folks in the front row and we can't have drum set. So I was getting a lot of those kind of gigs, corporate corporate events and whatnot where there was no drum set, but mm -hmm. it was hey, it was still work, so I took it. And I really built up tolerance and I was playing to a point where I could play all day long. Now I'd probably have to practice for a little bit. Um, one thing you got to be careful of too, guys, is injury. You may notice I have a Band-Aid on my, on my finger on my left hand. Too much cone? No. Dumb. Uh, changing the, the headlamp in my wife's car. Oh, there you go. And she goes, my light burned out. Ah, I can do it. I can fix it. And I'm, and I'm sitting there with the bulb and I turn it and the bulb broke in my hand. <laughs> and cut me right to the bone. Oh, my. I mean, it's so funny because it's such a tiny little cut, but... Owie. <laughs> so, right off the bat, playing hand percussion, not too bad. You know, it didn't happen on the end, it happened on the tip. There you go. So, I just a little bit of shock there. So, be careful, guys. Whatever you're doing with your life, if you're going to play hand percussion, we have to try to, try to kind of have girly hands to have manly hands. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say one thing that you were talking about mentioning before is that um, when they called you up, they said, oh, you're a drummer. Can you play, you know, djembe and stuff? Most drummers automatically think that, yeah, I'm a drummer. I can keep a rhythm so I can play the djembe. Yeah, of course. Uh, and they never practice it. No. Um, so is, is it that easy? Can I just sit on a djembe? And well, you, you can. And, and for me, what I do a lot, and I think Nate and I will demonstrate this in a couple of seconds, is I... I, before I had any real formal lessons on this instrument, um, I was trying to play this one drum like a drum set. Okay, um, I mean now I can get my high shaker going for a hi hat effect or a shaker effect. Before I used to tie like egg shakers to my shoe and yeah. duct tape them on there and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Those days are over. <laughs> now the high shaker, highshaker.com, um, is around. And uh, what I was doing is like, for, say for example, um, I wanted to play boom, cha, boom, boom, cha. You know, I, I would play the bass tone go. that would kind of fill in the rhythm a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you could just play me like... I mean, it's nothing yeah. magical. We're not going to win a Grammy for that. But the thing is, is what I could do is I can take that idea and I can expand off it. Maybe try to do some drum fills, but not get too crazy. I mean, so let's do the same thing. I'm just going to get a little bit busier. One, two, three, four. Yeah, would you say? It's a lot more interesting. I mean, as as a guitar player, uh, Nate would tell you what would work or not. Um, this is what I see a lot of uh, drummers who say, "Oh, I can play percussion." That's that's always my biggest fear is when the drummer goes, "Hey, I can play percussion," and you're on drums and there's a set of congas next to you, and the guy <coughs> does this. Play me the same thing. One, two, three, four. Believe it or not, hand drums still have to have a groove, guys, and even if you are playing with a drummer, but especially when you're not playing with a drummer and there's nobody else that's going to hang on to the groove for you. Uh, like I said, just the two of us, you saw what we were jamming earlier. There was a bass underneath that track before, but uh, it's great. The stuff that we could do, we could, we're going to make up some stuff here in the next little while, but uh, is try to treat it like a drum set. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have to necessarily learn specific patterns. I mean, a lot of the African patterns that I learned would be great in drum circles or in those situations, but... This could be the singer-songwriter situation. It could be, uh, you know, like I said, the campfire gig, whatever, right? So that's really what we're after here is how do we just take this instrument and say, well, I can't take my full drum set. So 
something like that. So you would consider, like, obviously the bass tone is the bass drum. Bass drum. Um, the closed tone open and tone. open tone. Well, yeah, it could be a snare, different snare effects, right? So if I was going like... Right. Once you kind of get used to doing that, you can take the left hand, or sorry, the right hand away from b bass tones and try to add some other, like say, like almost like snare ghost notes or okay. tom fills. But the main thing is you don't want to lose that bass tone because mm -hmm. it's just like a bass player dropping out everybody knows. It's like, what happened? What'd you do? Yeah. You know. So try to keep that tone in there. You agree? Yeah. You know, as as a uh, as a guitar player, you know, you'd know if it's if something's working and something's not. And I've seen situations where I'm going, "Ooh, gee, why is that guy playing champagne yeah, on the, that track?" Uh, <laughs> there for the song or exactly. the band. Yeah. Exactly. And to me, it's rhythmic. Like, if like for example, can you make something up completely? And I, just for the for the record, guys, I've never actually played with with Nathan before, <laughs> so uh, this is kind of fun, and this is a, a great example of how we do this. So you're just going to play something rhythmic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to listen for rhythmic ideas. Okay, just with those three tones I just showed you. Okay, and I'm going to try to follow what he does. Cool. Start your own little group. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, we're going on tour, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's the thing is, you know, I was kind of doing some of the stuff similar to what he was doing, then trying to add and fill it up a little bit. But uh, the main thing is, you know, you want to try to be as musical as you can and listening to some of the little nuances that he's playing in there. And with experience, with experience, guys, you guys will see what, what we mean by that. But hopefully that helps. With yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, it's a great, great way of doing it because there's a lot of times where I'll show up or there's a group of people behind a campfire and one person will bust out a guitar yeah. and, all right, let's jam. Who's got a djembe? You know? And half the time, it's the person who plays a djembe is not even a drummer or they think they know how to play it. So it's great that you show that. You know? You know, and it's something so simple. Like, for example, you know, if I teach somebody a djembe lesson the first time, it's the same thing I'm showing you guys today, is the tones. But then I might say, okay, try this, and I have them go... Like, just, you know, back and forth. Now, you could play some of that, couldn't you? So what I did, we did, we started really, I started real simple, and as I listened to what Nate was doing here, I tried to sort of, you know, adhere to what he was playing, to turn mm -hmm. it into something. Because, you know, if you're kind of going, well, I don't want to just do this, this is really boring, lend your ear to the rhythm part. You know, watch his right hand. You know, if you have a guitar player, watch the right hand, see what's going on in the right hand. You can see you try to catch some of those rhythms. And uh, with experience, you guys will get it. It's not, uh, you know, it's not that hard, really, so. Cool. cool. So that, that that's a, a pretty basic, I mean, there's only so many tones you can get from a djembe, but what you're sitting on has a couple different tones in there um, with the cajon. How yeah. would you relate that kind of stuff to the cajon? Yeah. Well, there are more here. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh, okay, sure. Um, Sorry. The, the cajon is funny. The cajon is... is uh, is an instrument that wow. I mean, I was playing cajon in in a in a real flamenco band. Uh, I know I opened up with Bombaleo by the Gypsy Kings. That's not real flamenco, um, but like real true flamenco with flamenco dancers and uh, and singers and, and guitar players. And I was probably the only guy, one of the few guys in Vancouver that owned a cajon. Oh really? At that time, like ten years ago, because it wasn't really that popular, and I had kind of a really crappy one. It wasn't that great, and uh, he'd be like, "Yeah, Michael's got a cajon," and I get these phone calls, and I'd be like, "Hey, here's me learning the flamenco style, you know, bullerias and all those kind of things," and now you see them everywhere. I mean, cajon has just exploded in popularity, which is super cool for all the cajon makers. Um, but for me, when I first uh, bought my cajon, 
I had already been playing congas and I had already been playing djembe. So this was kind of the newest addition to the yeah. hand drumming family. Um, and I sit on a pillow. See, this is, I mean, it's a, it's a wooden box. So I just went and bought myself a little pillow. Because if you're sitting on this thing for a long time, you know, it's, uh, it gets a little uncomfortable. So for me, I just found like a little bar steel pillow and I'd sit there. Nice. Yeah. Comfy, yeah. right? Why sit on wood when you don't have to, right? Um, so the the other thing too is you got to make sure you're comfortable when you're playing this thing because you're hunched over, right? The biggest thing is you're going to be really hunched over, and same kind of thing. Like if I play right in the center of the box, cajon is is uh, translated to box or drawer or case. <laughs> um, it's the same idea, you know, but it's a whole different sound. Yeah. So super cool, right? And the uh, the open the open tones. Up at the top here, so the same kind of thing can apply. You guys can see in that camera there. Is I bring my thumbs right to the top of the box, right, and same thing that applies here, right, and then the closed. It's a little bit harder to hear on this because you don't really muffle the head as much. I, I can muffle more if I put my hand down a little bit further down. The tone difference is slight, but yeah. it is there. You can really tell. Um, and I mean, there's a ton of different ways to play the cone. We'll just give you some examples here. Like I would go, uh, if I was to go, like say doing the. So once again, the snare sound would almost be at the top, right? But the nice thing about the cone is I can play in the middle and not get that big bass tone, mm -hmm. right? I, I get the bass tone when I, when I smack it with the whole hand. But then when I kind of play more with, with fingers, which is something I didn't get into here, which I will in a second, I can get a mellower sound, right? Which going back here, remember how I said bring your hands here for the open and the closed tone? Yep. Just bring my hands even back further so it's now just the bottoms of my fingers. Gotcha. But guys, experiment. Go from fingers all the way to your to your open tones. I mean, there's no rule. As long mm -hmm. as it sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not hurting yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And that's all I started doing was I just started experimenting with say even like a single stroke roll, right, left, right, left, from fingers. Then I went to the cajon. But the nice thing is these instruments aren't that hard to get a sound of. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of, you know, you want to learn some patterns and some techniques. That's what you want to spend some time on. But that's the best thing about the djembe and the cajon is you really can just sit down and almost fake them if you kind of know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate to put it that way. But, you know, if I just did this, could you play something like that? get real rhythmic -y and funky and someone will, a bass player will kind of want to come along and jam and a singer will come and you know make sure you're not got a big drum circle in a band and then, then we go on tour yeah, <laughs> then you go on tour exactly. so but so i mean so those are the basic tones guys i mean there's tons and tons of other ones which should we get into today we have we, we have a few more minutes left I would, I would like to maybe talk a little bit about the tones i also would like to talk about maybe if there are there some do's and don'ts behind playing hand drum djembe's or cajones i know when i play i want to make sure there's an even amount of bass tone and uh, other tones so it's not doesn't sound like it's oh, missing sure. something yeah. is there anything like that that you would recommend or any kind of
kind of do's and don'ts that you would apply to this? Okay, well, first don't is no sticks. No, no sticks. sticks. There you okay. go. Um, <laughs> well, don't overplay. That's the thing. You know, I mean, when you get a chance to solo, it was funny when Nate and I were, were jamming that, uh, that first tune. He, he, in our quick little rehearsal, he said, you know, here, take this little section to solo. And I kind of had a chance to sort of play a little bit. But the main thing is groove, is make it groove. It's, this is not a drum solo. If, if there's a chance for that, take it. If there's not, get people dance and get people wanting to bob and listen. So rule one, don't ever play, which applies to your, your rule of, you know, not too much bass and that. You know, it's, it's sometimes the bass tone, if you're playing with a bass player, see, we can't change the pitch of this, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes bass players go, you know what? That's tuned to an F. I'm, we're playing an F sharp. And that bugs them. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had a guy say that once with one of my old djembe's. And I was like, oh. And I couldn't bring it to the gig. Because every time I hit the bass, he just kind of was like, ah, dude, I hate that. Is it, so, is it too hard to tune a, a djembe? Well, these, even... these are tough. Uh, yeah. I did take a course, and I don't remember a thing about it. Yeah. Uh, you need to wear work gloves. And it's, it's like a macrame course, man. There's probably lots of stuff online, but I actually took a course. And uh, it was tough mm -hmm. because you've got to keep tension on the drum. So once these heads rip, that's why I say no sticks. Once these heads rip, you got to get someone who knows what they're doing. Um, otherwise, you got to take a course. And I think I paid like 80 bucks to take the course. And unfortunately, I don't remember how to do it. <laughs> well, there. <laughs> get someone else to do it now. Waste of 80 dollars, I guess. <laughs> Somebody in the chat was saying, can you tune a cajon? There's no tuning with a cajon. Well, there are some now. That, there's some in the market. Really? Yeah, that have adjustable adjustable front heads. I mean, man, there's so many different wow. companies out there. Like adjustable, well, the string inside, because they'll have like a guitar string like, to create that snare sound. Some you can adjust. There's levers on the side, like you can adjust the tension of them. Where, oh, yeah, have, I, where is, have I been? This is old school, man. This yeah. is this is an old LP. And now, man, between all those companies, you know, Meinl and Schlagwerk Percussion, I think out of Germany makes some sweet cajones. <laughs> but I don't. I've never owned one, but they sound great. But yeah, there's a ton. Just go online, guys. You guys will see. There's a ton that you can adjust. Um, and I'm sure they're adding more and more stuff all the time. There's some you'll notice that I kind of tip myself back a little bit when I play. Um, it's mainly because that's comfortable to me. Um, if I'm too bent over, I feel like I'm going to fall forward. There are some that you can tip. I've seen guys put door stops underneath them to sort of sit like that. But then when I go over here, it's like it feels weird. But some people who just play cajon will stick like those triangular door stops underneath their cajon so they can play sort of leaning back like that. But uh, um, Quick question that yeah. I have. Would you ever go to a gig with both? Is it, or, or is there a time and a place for Cajon and a time and a place for Jembe? It depends on the music. But, yeah. you know, it's nice because here I've got the lows and I've got those real high ding, ding, like the tones. Here I've got the smacks and the snary kind of sound, right? And it's nice because maybe I, I, there was times where I, I would get called to just bring a Cajon to the gig. It was so weird to just walk in with one thing. <laughs> But I would get bored of the same sound all the time, you know? It was like, and the guy's like, yeah, it's great. And three hours later, I'm like, it's just like playing one string all night, you know? And so I would go, you know, I'm going to bring my djembe and see if anybody notices. And they'd be like, wow, that's great. Keep that. You know, keep bringing that because now you got that, you know? Like I said, you know, it, 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 you can go to the gig and take what you think is going to work. And if someone doesn't like it, they might tell you. But mm -hmm. in most cases, you know, most musicians are cool. They're not going to say, don't bring this or don't bring that. But, uh... Yeah, I've even had a bass drum on the side where I've had a little 18-inch 18, 18 bass drum and I'll play like... And then add the shakers and add the cowbells. So, yeah, sometimes the more the merrier, whatever you guys can afford to take. But if you just have a cajon, learn to really groove on it and, and stuff like that. So, Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Well, we have a few more minutes if you want to oh, do sure. a couple, couple more tones. More yeah. Let me show a couple more, a couple more little tricks you guys can try. So we've, we've talked about the bass tone, we've talked about the open tone, the closed tone, and the slap. Okay. Um, a little roll. Some people always ask me, "How do you do this?" And I think I, I, I learned this somewhere. I can't remember. Is ring finger and thumb, and getting this happening. Like a roll. Very now cool. it gives me a chance to ah. free up another hand, right? Um, finger exercises. You know, I, I, I spent a lot of time taking a lot of lessons on different hand drums, like some even tabla, even uh, Indian tabla. And uh, I try to apply a lot of those kind of, you know, snap sounds and all that. I mean, whatever works, guys. I mean, I don't necessarily use so what that. Do you do? What are you doing there exactly? Here, it's, it's almost like a reverse snap, but my index finger is on, on top of my middle finger. And I'm just pushing it down. It's... Kind of like doing this. I can't get the sound here. Yeah. But 
and uh, learn that uh, taking uh, Darbuka and Doombeck, you know, these little snaps. And the teacher that I had, man, he would do that, and you'd be like, ah, is that ever loud? It was like wow. a rim shot on a snare. Um, so, you know, and like, some of those guys, they practice that forever and ever, but sound effects, things like that. You know, I still do the elbow thing. Very cool. tricks, drum fills, end of song stuff. Um, my personal favorite, and uh, the, the first person that I ever saw Cajon is actually someone who's become a, a friend of mine, is Alex Acuna. And uh, Alex is still my favorite percussionist for any of those who do, do know that or do not know that. And the first person I saw play Cajon was Alex Acuna on his first video. And he was playing Cajon, and he had his foot up on the, on the, uh, on the Cajon to change the pitch. So for some of you that can't tune it, I can't tune my, my cajon, is listen to this. Very cool. My cajon gets all marked up. I was like, man, you're sure hitting that thing. I said, no, nah, it's my shoe. Very <laughs> my cool. shoe's rubbing the sticker off, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Those are those little kind of tricks. But the main thing is, you know, if I just wanted to play, like even that thing we were doing at the very beginning, that six eight feel, you know, yeah. one two three four five six, one two three four five six. You know, I would start with the basic, you know, one two three four five six, one two three four five six, one two three four five six, and try to swing it more and make it a little more funky. Dink dink da. Just like the guitar part. See, it's like I, I, I was meant to be a guitar player. Give me that thing. No. Um, you know, and it's like, because I went, jing, jing. And that's what I would play on guitar. Jing, 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 jing. And I don't know, does that bother you when I did that? Oh, awesome. Oh, cool. Well, see, I didn't know. Um, and that's what I think, is I, I'm trying to think musically and rhythmically at the same time. And And getting melodies in your head and those rhythms is really going to help you guys with this instrument too because it's kind of this naked thing. What do you do with it, right? Yeah. So find someone to jam with the play alongs. There's a play along we have with yep. this. Yeah, well, we'll, do be, that, guys. we'll be releasing the exact song that we played here on Friday uh, for all the drum you members so you can take it to actually and play either with a kid or a djembe. Yeah. But before we go any further, do you guys mind if I get you guys to make a song up on the spot? Uh, maybe just do it in 4 or 4, like a little pop tune or something like that. And uh, you use all the techniques that you've kind of taught, even the little finger things, and sure. just have a ball, use some of the splash, just to get some of the ideas um, with a musical setting. Is that cool? Absolutely. That'd cool. be great. This sounds a little meaner sounding maybe minor not so happy as the first one there you not go so happy. there you go <clears throat> Sweet. I could listen to that all, all, all afternoon. You got one of the 
uh, best acoustic guitars here. That one was, of the best. That was pretty ones. cool, actually. That, that, would, that would probably be a play along of some sort later. So, you know, it was yeah. funny because I went to the cajon, and did you know I was going to the cajon? No. Nope. Because all of a sudden you go into that tick, almost that palm muting thing, right? That we yeah, were doing? I, I was just counting in groups of four or whatever. So, so this is an like, example. Yeah. Happy. I don't want to say sad, but less happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. with all that flamenco stuff we used to do, you know. It was a very, a very aggressive oh, kind of yeah. push in the dancers with their feet. Um, you know, it, it, the guitars were what was making it happy and the singers, but I just found the rhythm side of uh, the cajon can tend to be a little bit harsher. I always found that the cajon was easier to relate to a drum kit because oh, sure. you have that snare sound almost in the bass. Whenever yeah. I would play the cajon, I would just mimic what my yeah. beats were. I remember getting asked, Yuko was, was doing a couple acoustic uh, shows, and I, was, I don't play cajon or djembe that often, so mm. I would just relate all the beats that I had to, um, it was, to the absolutely. cajon. And it worked. I mean, obviously, I played with less dynamic. We played a little bit slower, kind of had an acoustic feel to it. But to start with, that's what I did, and it yeah. seemed to work. And try that for you guys that are jamming with some bands and say, hey guys, let's just do an acoustic set today. You yeah. Know, put, put away your electric guitar, grab an acoustic, and see what happens. You never know. Yeah. You know? We have some guys in the chat, like John was saying, we should do a, a 90 minute Friday lesson with just cajon, djembe, and you guys just jamming <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. I'm in. Let's yeah, do it. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to do an album. Um, and then another cool thing about it is, I you guys can't see the mics, but um, uh, Victor's actually got a mic right in the back of the cajon. There's a hole in there. Mm -hmm. He stuck a mic right in the back there, and he's got another little SM57, I think, pointing at the, at the front there. So you can get it to sound really beefy, yes. too. Um, but then as soon as he went to that djembe, man, that bass from the djembe oh, just I know. totally takes over. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And like I said, that's the thing. It's a great sounding djembe. Like when I got here, I had mine, which it hasn't been tuned. I've had this drum for 10 years. And this was sitting in the studio. And I went, can I see that for a second? I hit it. And I went, ooh, nice. And it's also on a stand, too. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. I should mention real quick, just before we fit, because some people will say, well, what do you if you don't have a stand? What yes. do you do? You just buy the djembe. No, they don't come with a stand. Um, for me, what I end up doing, if I was, I'll just, nah, I'll use mine. Yeah, you should take that one right there, yeah. You know, is, uh, I think it was a camera. Maybe we can do uh, the overhead cam, if we can see this. Or not. Yeah, we can see. Um, is what I end up doing, because I still want to have it tilted away from me. You never want to have a djembe facing you like a steering wheel, because now I can't play it. I can't get those tones, right? Is you want it tilted away. And two things you can do. If, if it's tall enough, you can let it, let it rest on the ground, tilt it away. Remember, you want it to be tilted away. Because of that tone, um, it won't generate if, uh, if the drum is flat. So now, but it's going to fall down, right? There's no stand, so it's going to fall. So a couple things. You can snug it with your knees, but the problem, you start get going, it's going to pop out. A couple things you can do. You can cradle it, get it right in there, yeah. right? And cradle it completely with my legs, like I'm kind of wrapping my legs around the bottom of it. Right? Um, if the drum is too low, it's not very high, what I end up doing is I, I put it inside the side of my backs of my shoes like this. So I get it in there, and then I sit a little closer, and I still snug it with my knees. So now it's a little bit higher, and my shoes are absorbing the shock. It, don't try this in bare feet. <laughs> so for those of you who do not have a stand, that's what I would suggest. But uh, the stand is something I bought uh, years ago. And uh, just, it's, it's helped because now I don't have to worry about holding the, the djembe, even if it's heavy. So, cool. yeah, this is great. It's a lot of fun. I'm having a good time here. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. This lesson's going by so fast. Um, let's get to a couple questions. Yeah, absolutely. Also, guys, I'm going to give away three memberships to Drumio. If you're just joining us or you came halfway through, to get that, go to facebook.com slash Drumio like us. And this was a member requested video from a lot of the members in Drumio. So what thank I want you. from, yeah, thank you guys. For what I want from you uh, is to suggest another lesson that you would love to see. What kind of lesson would you want Drumio to do? And it doesn't have to be on the kit. Like you see, we have um, hand percussion. Yeah. We actually did a lesson on... Um, you and I did congas, yeah. I congas did. a while yeah. back, yeah. Uh, a couple months ago. So right on the wall, what it is that you would like to see and I'm going to pick one of uh, well three I guess members to, to win Perfect. okay so let's get to some questions and then at the very end I have somebody in the chat here sorry I just got to scroll up it was Patrick um, Sorrell or Sorrell sorry Hi, is saying how do you pr play when there's more than one djembe so at the very end uh, I think I'm going to jam I'm going to get uh, maybe if it's just me and you and you stay on the guitar so I'm going to have a djembe too I'm going to show you what things not to do well how do you get play. three djembe players to play in time Oh, you, you don't think, can you? You shoot two of them. Yeah, oh. there you go. <laughs> Sorry. There's um. your rim shot. Okay, we got too many questions to get to, guys. Um, on Fridays, we usually have a question and answer for all you drumming members, as you know. So if we don't, I'm going to siphon through the ones that aren't really related to this because we only have 50 minutes left. Mm -hmm. And uh, please come out to the Friday lessons or even tomorrow's yeah. lesson. We'll get to the questions. Promise, we always do. Just Mondays are always tricky. I say that every time. 
<laughs> okay, so um, Frollo just says, if you haven't already gotten into it, can you go over all the different voices you get from the Jimbo? We've already talked about that. He sent that right in the beginning of the lesson. Um, so we'll get we'll pass that one. Okay, one second here. Here's a quick one here. Well, it's a loaded question, but Mike, can quick. you quickly show us, this is from Sasha, how you can play a Mozambique on the Cajon? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no? You got me think, well, on the Cajon. <coughs> I mean, there's various, you know, you could even do, try to do late in the evening, which is sort of Mozambique-ish. Uh, one second. Uh, one second. Uh, I gotta think about that pattern. Just apply it, you know, so I'm trying to get the song in my head. But just try to apply what you do on the drums, take away your feet, yeah. you know, and see if you can at least get the rhythm. I was just thinking of the, uh, you know. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and try yeah. to see if I can make it <coughs> sound like the drum side, the drum set part of it. So I'm glad you asked that, Sasha, because it gave us an idea to see what goes through Mike's head when he's <laughs> <laughs> when he's trying when he's trying to play it. You're you're humming it around. That's, yeah, that's well, it great. helps because, like, like I said once again, I listen to melody and and, and uh, melodic instruments. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quickly, um, what kind of make or model of uh, djembe stand is that? That's one. This one's here. Uh, this Rob. is a Gibraltar. 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 Djembe stand. Heavy duty. It actually does weigh more than the djembe. But Does I was, it really? yeah, they, they wow. had, there was some other ones they had that were hollowed, I swear it was tin. And in the middle of the set, timber! <laughs> and yeah, I was well, getting friends to weld stuff, and I finally went into the music store and said, what is the biggest, heaviest, insane, nuclear stand? And this has lasted me like six years. And I, it's a Gibraltar, I believe, yeah. It's great, yeah, but it's heavy. But believe me, you want it to be heavy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, Wiro asks, hey guys, great lesson. Um, I, I, you'll see I have absolutely no previous knowledge to djembe, so here are my questions. First off, what kind of aspects, what aspects should I look for uh, when I'm buying a djembe? Um, I'm looking for a quality instrument. He also asks, how do I know it is time to tune my djembe, and how do I know in case I'll need, it, if it needs to be tuned up? Yeah, um, to me, it's, it's like if, if the drum sounds like this, nice lows and nice highs and I don't have to really hit hard to get those lows I like that yeah I like the look I go for the look of the drum the size I like 12 13 14 I don't want to go too big this I believe is like a third looks like a 13 this is a 12 um, and price I try to stay under 300 bucks for me personally mm -hmm. you know and weight I don't want to weigh too much I've had a drum that's weighed like 100 pounds it was just ridiculous um, that's what I look for yeah, and then do you know if it needs to be tuned? Oh, like we are talking well, about before, tuning is something you don't really yeah. want to do. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Is this drum, because it hasn't been tuned. I bought this drum 10 years ago, and it's just starting to lose. It's, I know this drum could sound better, and what I do is I'll grab these strings with pliers, and I can tell that it would sound better if it was a little bit higher pitched. Ah. Um, with the remos and the tokas and those, you can actually tune with a drum key. Right? There's some you can use, that's almost like a, a conga nut uh, wrench, and there's some with the, the, so those are a lot easier to tune. These guys, I'd have to get someone to do it, because once again, this I'd have to start a new line. Like you think Basically what has to happen is I'd have to continue on, and I just can't remember how to do that. I can't find those sheets that, they, that I got in this in this <laughs> course I took. So like I said, I'm sure it's online, but I'd rather just pay someone to do it. So That one definitely looks really cool. This is great with yeah. the faces and all that. Yeah, I like really, this film. It was really super gnarly. cool looking and all that, and I've had this guy for a long time. But I, because of the weather, this has been on the plane quite a bit and stuff too, so it's it's just time. But I might take this to a djembe maker, and he might say, you know what, you need a new head. This head's dead. Mm -hmm. Just like a drum head. Eventually the drum head would die. So to me, it's your ear. Your ear will tell you. It'll be like, hmm, it's starting to go. But like I said, 10 years. April Singer says, uh, Hi, April. Uh, hey, Mike. Uh, hey, April. Uh, have you played the LP American series Cajon? And if so, how would you compare it to the one you're playing now? I think that's the Mario Cortez. Is that? You know, all the... Uh 
All the years? You that's all, all the stuff's worn off because of my foot. Um, I bought this guy 10 years ago, so I, you're probably right. And no, I haven't tried the... Uh, we, have a, we, have a, we have a minor here, but I think it's um, a lower quality one. It doesn't sound as okay. good. Um, yeah, go for sound, you know. I mean, there's, and if you like, some, some are purple, some are pink, some are green. <laughs> Maybe you like those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Cody Edwards was talking about tuning a Cajun. We already... Or Cajun. See, there you go again. People are now putting it in the, in the subject as Cajun for me. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dirty Wendell asked the same question when buying a Jemba, what should you look for? We just kind of talked about yeah. that. Um, oh, here was D Dave the Wave says, my Remo Jemba has normal drum lugs so I can easily tune mine yep. um, and change the heads no problem. Yep. Really cool. Yep. Yeah, I think that's great. And if you can find one like that, I'll power to you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Jose Mede's drummer says, is there a Cajon sticks that you get? I've seen, who makes them? I've seen, like, there's all kinds. There's conga sticks and there's stuff like that. There's all kinds of specialty sticks. Uh, you know, Google that. I'm sure that there's a company that makes them. But, yeah, there's got, I mean, brushes. I've actually, I should have brought some brushes, but I will use wire brushes or nylon brushes on this just for an effect. You don't get that full, but you do get this cool kind of sound. So, <laughs> yeah. you, won't, you won't hurt this. I've tried to break this go home. You're, you're telling me that, I've, yeah. I've, I mean, aside from punching it, but I've tried to, like, and I just can't, you know. I'm sure that looks funny from the overhead camera. But, uh, um, you know, I've tried to break this thing so I could convince my wife i got to buy a new one, but I can't break it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Dave DeWay says, I gig with the djembe and also bring two splash cymbals that I smack with my hand. So I say, he said, it's really cool to see Mike doing the same thing. Yes. That's awesome. I know when you... Adding a little thing like that. Mike came into the studio today. He's like, Dave, do you have two cymbal stands? I was like, cymbal stands? But I th I, now I see why. Yeah, Very cool. the chimes. And, and you, got me, you, you allowed me to do the chimes for you. You're the chime master. I'm the chime master. Um, April Singer says, Dave, would you, say, would you send my husband a letter telling him that a djembe is required equipment so that I may go out and buy one? It is. <laughs> it is, yeah. If you're a drummer, you've got to have a djembe. And the thing is... Uh, Nate, have you done a lot of gigs? You've, you've toured so many, so many different places, done so many different gigs. How often do you actually do a gig with a djembe or a cajon or something like that? When I was touring with Jared, we would pick up gigs and if we were in a foreign country or something. He bought that uh, djembe in Estonia, and we picked up three gigs. Really? So we're doing like 12, and three or four of the gigs ended up being with hand drummers. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. And that's something that um, uh, any drummer could do. They just most like uh, don't have a djembe, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So continuing here, um, we got a few more minutes left. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Sorry. One second here. This one's from Patrick Sur Surel. Says, uh, "Can you spend a few words on playing cajon and djembe with another drummer?" We're going to get to that in a few yeah. minutes here, just because of the fact that uh, uh, I think it's a great way to end it. Just mm -hmm. like a little drum, little drum, jam, yeah, little drum, drum jam. Circle, sure. uh, drum mom says, "Can Mike play a couple?" Oh, that's a, a lesson that would require a kit. She asked if you can talk about some shuffle patterns. We'll get to that on another lesson. Um, there's obviously a few lessons last week that we did on shuffles. Yeah, sure. You can even do it on the right? cajon. <laughs> Okay, oh, um, Dave the Wave says, for the non-tunable djembes, we would usually soak, a, uh, sho soak the skin in water, then hold it by the fire, and it would tighten it up. Ooh. Whew. I'd, be, I'd be too, risk, too, too uh, scared me. to do that, but yeah. uh, if I'm you sure got um, the cojones, you can try it yourself. Ooh, that was so lame. Um, okay, last question here. RJ says, the one-handed roll with the thumb and the finger, how much wrists are you using, if any? It's all wrist, I guess. You twist back and forth. It's like a, opening a doorknob, but just using with those two fingers. And I mean, it's kind of like my whole forearm sort of shaking, but it's like the wrist is kind of going back and forth. Like that. Yeah. I'll do it as well with my left hand, but yeah. Cool. Good bass player. <laughs> yeah, yeah bass slapping. Yeah. Okay, let's give away some Drumio memberships for all you guys who submitted on facebook.com slash Drumio. Just let me refresh the page here so I get all the recent ones. Be great if it would refresh. We're streaming a video, but yet my Facebook doesn't want to work. Hmm. How does that work? Yeah. Well, one that... thing we should, uh, I, I didn't get a chance to talk about today is, uh, maybe we can do this in an in a upcoming lesson, is uh, an African djembe master. But then he's no longer with us. He passed in 2003. Uh, Baba Tunde Olatunji from Africa is he has this great counting system. Okay? Ah. And it's with the tones we talked about. It's the uh, Goon Doon Godo Pata system. Look into that. We'll talk about that maybe in a previous or, or, or in, a, in a upcoming lesson. Sometime. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's really super cool. But I just didn't know if we'd had time to do that today. But uh, Baba Tunde Olatunji. 
Try saying that three times fast. No thanks. Email, <laughs> email me. I'm going to check that guy out. Yeah. Um, okay. So here we go. I'm going to give away some some uh, memberships here. First one's going to go to Art. Art Krahenbu. K R A H E N B U H L. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Art says, I would love to see a lesson on ostinatos. Oh, cool. That would be cool. I'm into that. Yeah, I'm into that too. That is going right in the list of lessons. In fact, I think I, I have something similar to that coming up, but uh, yeah, ostinato patterns would be great. Okay, next one. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong one. Here we go. Vilma. Vilma Fromatter, I think, I don't know if you're already a member yet. If you are, let me know. We can work something out. Uh, he says, great lesson, Dave and Mike. I would love to see a lesson for drums and percussion of all aspects of drum sound reinforcement, mics and their placement, etc. Also, choosing the right mic. Very cool. We have a lesson actually coming up this Friday on how to record yourself and mic yourself up for a video and stuff like that. So we're all about that kind of stuff. By the way, if you guys have won, if I've said your name, you got to email me, which is dave at drumio.com, and I'll set you up and all that. We got one more, okay? Here we go. This one here is going out to Alyssa Rossum. Alyssa Rossum, oh, A L Y S S A, says, uh, I would love to see a lesson on world beats. That'd be fun. That would be fun. I wouldn't be the guy to do it, but I'm sure. Well, world beats on percussion or drums? It could be anything. Okay. World Beats in general. So thank you very much. I've liked your status. For everybody who's won, email me, davidrumio.com. There's a lot of cool ideas on here. I'm just going to take all these and, and, and put them in the schedule. We have yeah. one on punk drum fills. Um, and Drew says, uh, can you do a lesson on brushes? We just did one lesson on brushes on Thursday of last week. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple other really cool ideas. So thanks for your, your submissions for that, guys. It's great. great and I'm going to take that uh, um, and do some lessons on that. Cool. Excellent. Okay, we got a couple minutes left. Let's jam. Let's jam. Yeah. So, what do we do? What do you not do if there's more than one djembe drummer here? Uh, you like, don't do your own thing. You don't do your own thing. <laughs> um, I, when I first moved to Vancouver, uh, I don't know if there still is, but out at uh, Jericho Beach, there that area, there was uh, a drum circle that they used to have in the summer times until the sun went down, right by the beach there. And it would start with like four guys. By the end of the night, there was 100. Wow. But it was into groups, and it was amazing because it would be 100 people playing all kinds of shakers and, and mainly djembes, but then you have people dancing too. But when I would show up, you know, if I would show up a little bit later, you know, I was like, wow, there's 40 guys playing. I would kind of look to see who's playing what, but everything worked. Like all the patterns had fit together and they all worked. And um, you'd kind of go, oh, I'm going to sit over here and this guy's going... Uh... It was very simple patterns, you know, and then you walk down a little bit and someone else was going... And I think it was more for the experienced than the uh, inexperienced. Like mm -hmm. people who couldn't really play could go. Right? And you had some guys, you know, they were taking turns soloing. But the main thing is it's got to fit. Everything's got to fit. It's like it's like if I had another acoustic guitar here, you know, either we're going to play the exact same thing or we're going to play something that's going to intertwine and, you know, and, and create music. But you don't want to step on each other's toes. That's the that's the big thing. So do you have a do you have a drum? Yeah, the pastor drum. Now, Nate, if you want to stay on guitar too, you're totally more than welcome to. Or if you want to grab, if you want to grab another drum, you can throw me that one, sure. Yeah. It's totally up to, yeah, grab that other djembe behind you there. That'd be fun. Because I am definitely the inexperienced. Because. Okay, so cool. So this is good because we got we got someone who's a master on guitar, but uh, maybe really. a court jester on djembe. No. Court jester. <laughs> um, so see, he's hold, this is good. The way you're holding it, you can, because it's small enough, you can snug it into your hmm. into your knees like that, like and that should work. Up, Not likely going to fall down. Oh, just just hit it for me for a sec. There it is. Wow, it's got a nice little tone. How about the higher tones? Fantastic. Let's see your lows. So we've got some nice different different tones here. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to give you guys each a part. Okay. okay. Sounds so good. So maybe we'll start with uh, with Dave just so you can kind of start and then Nate can jump in with you. So okay. I'm going to get you to go.
Michael. All improv. Good job. So there you go, guys. What you should do. And I love how you gave us parts. Yeah. I love how we weren't playing over top of each other. And then I love how we all kind of got a little chance to, to kind of do our own little solo and all yeah, that. For sure, you know. And it all fits. But you'll know. If someone's playing something that's really out of whack, you would be like, whoa, whoa, dude, stop, stop. You know, cut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. one of those. But your ears will tell you. You know, your musical ears will open up. And you'll go, it's not working. Let's try that again. So just those little, it was funny when you were going, kaka. I was going da 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 Yeah, this, I hear you know, that. It was funny because it was just because kind of this cool rhythmic thing. Right? I was hoping it wouldn't throw you off, but yeah. Mr. Musical Genius over here, of course not. We couldn't couldn't throw him off. <laughs> Concentrating. <laughs> thanks, thanks everyone for coming thank out. Thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you so that. much, Nate, for bringing your guitar skills. Yeah, thank you, bud. That yeah, was it was really a lot fun. of fun. And Mike, again, obviously, thank you so much My for pleasure. My pleasure. coming out. Thank you, sir. And I um, hope you guys learned something here from it. I mean, it's not rocket science, but there are some certain things that you have to consider when you're bringing your djembe or cajon out. Yeah. I encourage you, like Sarah, or sorry, April Singer. I don't mm -hmm. know why I called you Sarah. Like April was saying, I can, uh, um, can, can you convince my husband that I can go buy one? Go buy one. They're great. You can get gigs like Nate and Jared did out in Estonia. So <laughs> I definitely recommend doing it. And I um, hope you guys all enjoyed it. I'll see you all next Monday. For all you drummy members, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a good day. See ya.